opportunity in the next uh, couple of weeks, uh, you know, to do that uh, in a wonderful way. Uh, tonight, we're going to be looking at how important a home is. I thought we'd start by listening to the opening lines of um, Psalm 127. Unless Father, John, the Lord... Father John, let me mute everybody first okay. because we can't hear you very well. All right. I thought you already shut them off, but go ahead. <laughs> Great. Um, let's start by with just listening to the opening of Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman keeps awake in vain. In vain, it is vain for you to rise early, to retire late, to eat the bread of painful labors, for God gives to his beloved even in his sleep. We've been spending a lot more time in our homes, is my assumption, because I certainly am during this um, time of the uh, COVID uh, pandemic. And thanks be to God, we have beautiful homes uh, here in Lafayette. I said, if you're gonna be uh, homebound and confined, you can't find a more beautiful place to, to do that than our area and our homes and our neighborhoods. But you know that's not true for everyone. I talked to one of our parishioners um, yesterday, um, uh, Pippa Fisher, who uh, is a reporter, many of you know Pippa, uh, she writes for the local uh, Lafayette and La Mirinda papers, and uh, she was at a, uh, I think it was a, a city council meeting recently, she said it was a nine hour meeting. I said, Pippa, that's why they recommend that you hold meetings standing up, not sitting down. They go a lot shorter that way. But a lot of the discussion is about housing and housing in Lafayette, as we know, um, which can be uh, so high that it uh, you know, prices people out from even the thought of moving into the area. Um, the organization that we're going to be hearing from today, Home Match, uh, tries to deal with uh, the question of housing and how uh, uh, and even one individual can make a difference in the opportunity for having housing. I know little to nothing about Home Match, so I'm eager uh, to hear um, from uh, Gabriela Perez and uh, the friends that are joining her tonight. So Gabriela, I'm gonna turn it over to you, please. And if you don't mind, in the course of the evening, I may inter interject with a, a question or uh, something like that, okay? And don't forget, uh, friends, um, you, there's a chat box at the bottom, that little screen that says chat. You can write in a question or comment there if you uh, want that addressed by our speakers, and we'll leave time at the end of our gathering to be able uh, to do that. Uh, Gabrielle, the floor is yours. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm going to share a PowerPoint. So I'll be sharing my screen um, for everybody, but I do first just want to say thank you to St. Perpetua Church um, and to Christoph also for, he was the one who had this original idea and both John to invite us um, here to talk about our program Home Match um, and Covia and the services that we offer um, and just really looking at the concept of home sharing. So I will share my screen. If anybody at any point has any questions, please put them in the chat. Um, I, we will be answering questions as they come in. We'll also have a question time during the middle of the presentation going halfway through to just open it up to um, unmute everybody, have individuals ask questions, and then at the end of the presentation. So I'll share my screen. Okay. Yeah, so thank you. So um, my name is Gabriela Perez. I am the director of Home Match in Contra Costa County. We are a program out of Covia. Um, Covia is an organization, a nonprofit that's been around for 50 plus years in the Bay Area. Um, our mission at Covia is it promote, we promote positive aging by cultivating healthy and engaged communities with a continuum of innovative services, Home Match being one of those services. Uh, and I'm joined today by the lovely Clara Fuchs Schuber. Um, hey, everybody. And she is our program coordinator, and she is a vital resource in the Bay Area here in Contra Costa County with our home sharing program. 
Um, and then I am I also want to give a big thank you to Belinda, Don, and Anne. They are um, Don and Anne are uh, a match in our in the Contra Costa area here, and so they'll be talking about their experience. Um, and also thank you to Belinda, um, Don's daughter, for joining us today. But so what you see here in our first slide is actually a match of ours that is in San Francisco. And this is one of their quotes. Um, in this time of sky high rent and need for greater community, Home Match has offered them a vital service. So I'll be explaining Home Match today and also just talking about some of our other community services. So let me go to the next slide. There we go, okay. Um, so Home Match, we are a community service out of Covia. And like I said, Covia has been around for quite some time. There are three main things that Covia does. Um, we do everything from affordable housing uh, for older adults to life plan communities and then community services. So we, have a, we do affordable housing all over the Bay Area. Uh, here is the Bethany Center in San Francisco. We have we manage Jenning Courts in Santa Rosa, um, Oak Center Towers in Oakland, and then our life plan communities are also throughout the Bay Area. Um, we have Canterbury Woods in Pacific Grove and Los Gato Meadows um, in Los Gatos. Our community service programs, those are free programming. So the way our community service programs are funded are through city grants, foundational grants, and through our life plan communities and affordable housing. The reason why we make our community services free is because our goal is, is to let, an, let any individual be able to age in place. So maybe it's not a life plan community, maybe it's not going into affordable housing, maybe you wanna be able to age at home, uh, maybe you need access to fresh, nutritious fruits and veggies, so we offer programming um, around there. So we'll specifically talk about Home Match. And Home Match, we're a home sharing program. So it's based off of a um, national model, successful national model. Home sharing is all across the US. Uh, the idea of it is that an individual who maybe has extra room in their home uh, shares their home with another person. You have a housemate. If you've ever lived with, you know, even just family members, that's a housemate there. Um, so our goal through our home sharing program is to empower uh, aging, um, to empower individuals to age in place, to stay in their chosen homes, in their community, to create affordable homes using existing housing stock. It costs so much to make affordable housing that if we can utilize some of the existing housing stock there is, um, you know, by renting out rooms, that creates better opportunity for individuals. Um, and to fight social isolation. Uh, a lot of individuals now are socially isolated, especially with COVID-19, but even before that, a lot of people were having trouble connecting with others. Um, through, so through home sharing, that's one way that we are combating social isolation. Um, we are, have a community-based approach to affordable housing, like I said, by using existing housing stock. Our goal is to create resilient, not only communities, but connections between supportive housemates. So two people really creating a mutually beneficial relationship. And so the photo you'll see here is actually of our, some of our staff of Home Match. Um, and so we, we aren't a big team. We're kind, of, we're kind of small, but we're small and mighty. So again, any questions anybody has, please just let us know. So we are, Home Match is actually throughout the Bay Area. So we are in um, Contra Costa County, we are in Marin County, and we are actually in San Francisco City and San Francisco County. Uh, Alam we're not in all of Alameda County yet, but we are in the cities of Fremont, Newark, and Union City. So what, what we do is, we help individuals who want to share their home find a housemate and help individuals looking for affordable housing be matched up with you know somebody who's renting out a room um, we screen all of our applicants we do background checks uh, it is a no-cost program so it is free to everybody um, 
we do our background checks, we verify photo ID, uh, we go through a lengthy application process where we really get to know individuals to then be able to match them based on compatibility. Um, and compatibility can be anything from rent price to location, because Contra Costa County is very large, um, to also just lifestyle, uh, you know, needing to match up individuals that way. We then help individuals create their living together agreement, which is not, it's part of it is a lease. So part of it is looking at, you know, rent price, deposit, but the other section is looking at general house rules. You know, are you sharing condiments? Are you not? Who takes out the trash? What should the temperature be in the home? We think of all these things and we have you guys really create your agreement before you even do a move in because it's really vital that all of these things kind of get worked out. The issues come up completely normal that if you've ever lived with anybody, living with somebody sometimes is hard, uh, but we're always here to provide mediation. We're trained mediators and we also bring in third party mediators if needed. So Clara is gonna talk to you guys about our impact. Yeah, hi guys. Um, and also I just wanna say that um, I was actually, I actually went, grew up in La Mirinda. Um, I'm a graduate of Camp Lindo and my parents live in Moraga. So it's really nice to be talking to you guys. I feel like I'm talking to, you know, folks at home, which is great. Um, so yeah, um, just really quickly looking at the impact that Home Match has had on its matched participants. These um, results are from our 2019 survey. We've recently just finished our 2020 survey. And so if you want to take a look at those numbers, make sure to let us know after the presentation and we can send you um, that data. Um, but Home Match was started in 2012. And since then, we have created 214 um, shared housing experiences between people. So that, has, so that means we've matched 407 individuals. Um, in the 2019 survey and in the 2020 survey, we had 100% of participants say that they would recommend us to friends and family or already have. So I think that just really speaks to, you know, the quality of service we offer as well as the vital vitality of the service we offer in the Bay Area. Um, if we take a look at the middle numbers here, we'll see some averages of numbers. So we have 770 um, is our average rent per month and kind of the range throughout our entire program is $700 to $1,200. Um, occasionally, a home provider will ask for what we call a service exchange where they want, you know, a few small chores done in the house in exchange for reduced rent. Um, chores like maybe cleaning once every two weeks or driving, things like that. Um, and um, if that's the case, if a service exchange has been set up, then the rent can drop $500. Um, for 62% of participants, they've seen savings of $600 or more, $800 or more. Per month. So this is really a and save on housing costs. Um, and then in terms of match length, 10 months is the average, but that is the average of a very um, wide spectrum. Um, so I just got a message that I'm freezing. So everyone, you can come with me as we move to a different location in my apartment to try to get better internet service. Um, all right. So like I was saying, so like I was saying, um, 10 months is the average month for a match, but that is part of a very wide spectrum. Um, we've had matches that have lasted up to five years in length, and then we have some matches that only need to be temporary. Um, so for example, uh, maybe somebody is a student who just needs housing for a semester. In that case, a match can just be five to six months. Um, so yeah, Gabby, can you go to the next slide? And hopefully, um, I'm not freezing anymore so people can hear me. And also please ignore the background noise. I myself am living with roommates and it is dinner time, so there's some noise. All right, so who we serve. Um, we, also, uh, we also took a look at uh, you know, who are we matching. 
watch you buy Southwest oh. Airlines. Big mm -hmm. part of the I'm sorry. I'm yeah. just looking at some. Oh, okay. Um, so, so our average age for participants is 51. But in Contra Costa County, we actually have um, our ages skew a little higher. Contra Costa County serves um, an older adult population. So I think we're at our, our average age is in the 60s to 70s. Um, the age range that we serve is from 18 to 94. So again, a really wide range of um, individuals come to our program. Um, and, then house, and then we create housing stability. So if you look at this pie chart here, you see that 28% of participants we serve were dealing with homelessness, 27% were at risk of being homeless, and 10% um, were in transitional housing when they found our program. So we really cater to uh, those who are seeking housing and who really need um, a stable housing solution. And then as you can also see on the, I'm pretty sure it's the left side of the screen for you, we are a very diverse program. Thank you, Clara. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about our matches in terms of who our home seekers are that are coming to our program a little, a little bit more and who are the home providers and then get talk about, you know, share some of the testimonial that a lot uh, our home seekers do and our home providers share with us. So most home seekers find us either through various nonprofits throughout the area, through their churches, our social workers, case managers. Um, we work a lot with the city of Concord, with Contra Costa County, with the county offices. Um, a lot of people actually don't find us online. Um, and it's, it's a, more people actually find us through the nonprofits and through various cities and county organizations. Um, the average age throughout all of our programs throughout the Bay Area is 56 of a home seeker. In Contra Costa County, it's actually between 60 and 70 years of age. Uh, the average income of a home seeker coming to our program is around 33,000 a year. And about 68% are female. We found in Contra Costa County um, that about 80% of our home seekers in this area are actually female. And I just wanted to, oh, share with you guys just a perspective of one of our matches. This is Joyce and Christina. Um, they were matched uh, just one week before the first day of school. Christina is a 68-year-old part-time teacher. She had been experiencing homelessness. Um, she was raised in San Francisco. However, finding housing was becoming very difficult. Um, she had been couch surfing for some time and she had been driving from Marin County to her job in San Francisco, which was really becoming taxing on her. And so we actually ended up being able to match her in San Francisco. So not only was she able to find an affordable housing situation, however, she was closer to work, shortened her commute, which adds to a greater, um, healthier lifestyle. Uh, and Joyce was wanting to bring in extra income and she had been living alone for some time to rent out a room in her home. Um, so we matched them up and yeah, this is them right here and it's been pretty great. So next we actually have, I'm gonna talk about um, the perspective of providers and our, who are the providers that are coming to us. Um, so home providers, again, are individuals who are wanting to rent out a room in their home. Uh, providers come to us for a variety of reasons. The three main reasons that we see are one, either they're wanting companionship. So it could be that maybe they are, you know, everybody left the nest. They have this big home, the kids have moved away, um, they could be alone, and they're wanting to be able to share a meal with somebody, um, especially now with COVID-19 and being, being at home, um, really looking to just be able to interact and have, you know, somebody else in the home with them. The other reason is for extra income. It could be that the cost of housing has just gotten very expensive in terms of paying for bills, property taxes. We've had, we've seen some of that. Uh, and so Gabrielle, you froze. <laughs> Maybe it's that somebody 
maybe lost their license not too long ago, had it revoked. And so they need somebody to maybe drive them to the doctors once in a while, uh, maybe go pick up the groceries. Um, so those are the three big reasons why providers join us. Um, the average age of a home provider in our program is around 72. In Contra Costa County, it's actually 76. About 80% are female. Um, the age range is between 46 and 94, though, that we see throughout the county, er throughout all of our programs. Um, and the average income is about 40,000 a year. Um, and what you'll see here is we have a photo of Helena and Helen. So Helen actually, she's retired 72 year old who had lived in her apartment for more than 40 years. However, the annual rent increases were really putting her at risk of becoming homeless. Um, so Helen turned her second room, which had been her late husband's like film equipment room, his uh, hobby room, into an opportunity for supplemental income. So we were able to match Helen and Helena up based off of just their lifestyle preferences, location, rent, and it's really worked out for both of them. So this is another match of ours. So Claire is just going to talk to you guys about our comprehensive, really the intake process, how our application process works. Um, and again, if anybody has questions or if we're going too fast, let me know and we'll slow down. Thanks, Gabby. All right. Um, so here you can kind of see our order of operations. Um, so we're going to walk through this as if a home provider has, you know, just called us and decided to join the program. Um, so step one would be a virtual home visit. Uh, because of COVID-19, and I saw that there was a question in the chat about COVID-19, so we'll address that more later, but one aspect of COVID-19 is that 100% of our operations have become virtual. Um, so we do a virtual home visit where we get to know you and your goals via a virtual appointment, where we not only take a tour of your home, we also um, you know, go through an application that you've submitted at that point together. And like Gabby said, the application contains um, lifestyle preferences and living habits. And so we just go through it to make sure we understand kind of what a general day for you looks like and how you want somebody to fit into your schedule, um, your life. And then once we have that first virtual home visit done, we go to our next step, which is compatible matching. So after we're done with the application and the screening, we'll start referring you potential candidates based on what we established earlier during that virtual home visit. Um, so some things we take into consideration when referring you applicants, um, obviously your budget and location, but also like we said, lifestyle. Um, are you a very clean person? Are you okay with some clutter? Do you use the kitchen every day? And so you need somebody who isn't in the kitchen that often. Um, these are all considerations that we take. And then, um, once we've made some referrals, um, the, then you can start meeting these candidates. And so we usually suggest a three-step process where you talk to them over the phone, you do a FaceTime or Zoom or whatever chat with them where you see them face-to-face. -face, and then we recommend if both parties are comfortable that there be an in-person tour of the home. Obviously, PPE, um, gloves, mask, um, hand sanitizer, we highly recommend. Um, if people aren't comfortable with an in-person tour, then a virtual tour um, can also, or we can also arrange for a virtual tour to happen. Um, and then once we, you found a promising candidate, we do a reference exchange between you and the home seeker. So um, you will provide us with three references that we will give to the home seeker, and the home seeker um, will provide us with three references that we'll hand off to you. Um, and then once you guys have decided to live together, we come back into the picture and help facilitate the living together agreement, which is our version of a lease that Gabby was talking about earlier. Um, so again, it outlines, you know, rent, deposit, all of those baseline things, as well as going into house rules and expectations. And it's actually quite a thick document. So this meeting usually takes one and a half to three hours, depending on how many questions people have. And then lastly, once you guys have matched, we don't just drop you and like disappear off the face of the earth. We continue to have a relationship with you. We check in periodically. Um, and we also encourage matches to call us whenever they need us, whether that be, um, you know, a request for mediation, because like Gabby said, a healthy part of relationship is conflict. So conflict naturally arises. Um, or if you just want to celebrate something with us or share something fun that happened, 
we love hearing stories from our matches. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of our entire process. Oh, thank you, Claire. Sorry, I was muted. Um, yeah, and one thing I'd like to say, just with the Living Together agreements, we were we are there, Home Match is there to help walk you both through the process. So we're really just mediating and making sure that both parties feel heard, that both parties' needs are being met. Um, we're advocates for both individuals. And so that's why we're there with, that's why it's such a lengthy meeting. And I know we've gotten feedback during our surveys, annual surveys of people being like, maybe the meeting shouldn't be that long. But for us, it's really important that we feel that both of you have the opportunity to get what you need out there and to really just dive into everything um, before signing this agreement. And so before I move on, I will answer some of the questions just really quickly in terms of COVID 19's affected our work. So, how has it affected our work? Um, thank you, Susan, for the question. So, like Clara said, we're virtual. Um, what we have noticed. So we are still up and running 100, 110%. Um, in the beginning, during the shelter in place, we noticed a real decline in terms of calls that we were getting from seekers and pro potential providers. However, that has really changed in the last month or two. We're starting to get more seekers looking for housing. I think you know part of the reason a lot of individuals were furloughed, um, individuals have been laid off. So we're actually getting calls from much younger seekers than what we've seen in the past. Most of our home seekers in this county area were usually older adults that either had been on SSI, were retired, um, now we're getting a lot more individuals that are, you know, were working or are currently still working at least part time or able to and needing to find an affordable housing option. Um, in terms of hope providers, we are still getting calls. Um, however, we're, we're constantly looking for more home provider, more potential individuals to open up their homes because uh, there's a lot of need out there. And yeah, so it's all virtual um, and we were what we do is during our living together agreement, we have, we talk to both individuals about COVID-19, about the risks associated with home sharing, um, cleaning styles, we go over that. We talk about cleaning, what cleaning products do you want to use? What does the CDC recommend? We talk about, do you want to create a, you know, maybe some of our matches create like a little stand when they come into the home that has gloves, that has a mask, that has, you know, hand sanitizer. Um, we really though, we provide the information, but we leave it up to the match to decide how they want to move forward because both individuals have the power is in their hands and they can make the decision in terms of what they're comfortable with. Um, some of our home providers are that are active with us right now are on hold because they are older adults. So some of our providers who are in their 80s or 90s are currently putting their homes on hold and not matching actively because they are concerned with COVID-19. Um, but then we have younger home providers in their 60s and 70s who are still uh, wanting to match. So for example, tomorrow we have actually two living together agreements that we're doing um, for a home in Pinole. So we're really, really excited to be doing that. And then Rita asked, is there a fee for the service? Um, no, there's not. We are a free program. 80% of our funding comes from Covia, our, I call it our mother organization itself. Um, that 80% we take from our life plan communities uh, that then goes to help fund um, and make sure that our service is free. The other 20% comes from city grants, foundational grants. We got a grant from Wells Fargo uh, the other year. We are funded through the, you know, the city of Chicago. Sorry, I just moved from Chicago, so sorry about that. Uh, the city of Concord um, is we, you know, has been really great with us. Uh, so we get city, city of San Francisco has been generous, and we just actually got a grant with um, Mill Valley. So we're really excited about that. So yes, our program is free, it's at no cost. Um, and then I'll just answer the last question. So is the length of stay part of the initial interviews and agreement? Yeah, so it our living together agreements are monthly agreements. 
Um, they renew automatically every month until somebody gives somebody else a termination notice. So it could be, you know, the, the lodger, the home seeker has said, you know what, I've saved enough money. I want to move out or, or I, I want to do something else. Um, they would just give a termination notice, which is if it's less than a year, it's a 30 day termination notice. If it's more than a year, it's a 60 day termination notice. Um, so. So yeah, so that is worked out, you know, pre, before the move-in. Um, so now I'm just gonna share with you some testimonials and then you guys are gonna hear from our great match, Anne and Dawn. So these are just some of our testimonials that we've gathered. Um, for someone seeking a room, we've heard everything from, you know, we've, that home match and home sharing in general has made it easier for them to be able to work closer, live closer to work, uh, making it easier to find affordable housing, especially, you know, in Contra Costa County and in, in San Francisco, the rents can range from 800 to 1300. Um, so somebody being able to find something around 800 for a room is pretty great. Um, some individuals find it for much less than that. Usually there's a service exchange, but it makes it much more affordable and feasible, especially you know, if somebody's dependent on SSI, on social security income, you don't get a lot monthly with that. So this makes it much more affordable for somebody who maybe is not getting that much in SSI or public benefits. Um, and then for providers, we've heard everything from that the process makes them much more comfortable, uh, both for providers and seekers, because, you know, on Craigslist, you're doing the work yourself. And you may not, there may not be a background check involved. And, you know, we provide the background check. Um, we, you know, go through the process of, we do, it's a criminal background check and it looks at judgments and liens. Um, but then, you know, it's a soft check, so it doesn't look at credit. I always like to remind people of that. Um, but yeah, so, and we're also just verifying ID. Uh, we just gather more information about individuals and then match on compatibility. And so before we talk to Ann and Dave, and Dawn, sorry, um, I just want to share with you guys, this is Stephen and David. They were actually matched the week before the shelter in place was started. Uh, they were matched within a month of both of them applying. Uh, they are in the Walnut Creek area. They are really great. Um, Stephen came to us really looking for compatibility. I mean, not compatibility, looking for companionship. He had been living alone for quite some time. He was really needing to form, um, wanting a community, you know, within his home. Uh, he had, you know, his friends and his community outside the home, but really seeking some companionship at home. And he had an extra bedroom, so he wanted to rent it out. And we matched him up with David. We introduced them and they just hit it off. David came to us because he was looking for an affordable housing option or not. He was going to have to leave the Bay Area. Um, and yeah, him and Steven hit it off. They actually cook a lot together. They go on walks and they've really been enjoying their time together. Uh, even with the shelter in place, they've really gotten to know each other. So now we're going to hear Don and Ann, and they're going to talk to us about, um, they're going to share their story and, you know, why they came to home, why home sharing, how they found us, uh, what it's been like to live together. And so I'm going to unmute them. Okay. Okay, Ann, I think you're unmuted now. Yes. Yep. So thank you, Ann. Thank you, Don, for joining us. And if you guys just want to share your story a little or what you're comfortable sharing. Okay. Well, I'm Ann and this is Don. And I found the Home Match program through the Senior Center in Brentwood. I just moved back to California and was staying with my cousin and he had given me six months to stay there. So within six months, I was matched up with um, Home Match and Don and I and his two daughters came and, and um, it looks like you froze. 
the laughing and you know, we just recently start painting and uh, um, adult coloring books together. So it's been a lot of fun. We sat and laughed at dinner together. We have breakfast together just about every morning. And it's just been a pleasure living here. He's such an easy going gentleman. He's an, uh, one of our vets and I love taking care of elderly people. That was my job in the beginning. So since I've been here, it's been really easy living here. So we get along real good. What you say, Don? <laughs> <laughs> and we laugh a lot. Yeah. And I think that's important for good health. Yes. Yep. Thank you guys. And I know Belinda, I think you're some, you're on the call. If you, I'm going to unmute you if you want to talk about too, because I know you guys found us um, yeah. and really helped your dad through the process. Yes. So, you know, my dad was getting to a point where he decided to stop driving Linda. and he was still, he, by the way, you say you go to age 94. Well, he's the 94 year old. He doesn't look it, but he'll be 95 in October. And mm -hmm. so he just stopped working. He was playing the piano at the senior center and doing a couple of little jobs. And he decided he just didn't want to do it anymore. But I noticed he really was, seemed very depressed to me. And we went through the options of what could we do about that? And one day I just thought, I don't know how to find somebody, but I just typed in roommate for seniors and Covia popped up. And that's how I found <laughs> out about them. And Anne was actually the first person we talked to. She has completely changed all of our lives. She is a gourmet cook. She plants, has a beautiful garden planted in the backyard. They eat fresh fruits and vegetables out of the yard. And um, Dad really doesn't want to go out much right now with the virus, but we did do a, a service exchange for her to do all the shopping and cooking and taking him places he may need to go or want to go. And it's just, I can't, it, same thing with their match. It happened like two weeks before the lockdown. It was just really by the grace of God, in my opinion, because <laughs> we would have really been in a bad way trying to figure out how to make it all work. I, my sister and I live out in Far East County and we're close enough, but you know, a lot of things happen that need attention on the spot that Anne can help with, you know, like, a, I don't know, something electronic is not being figured out or, you know, something that we would normally have to run to Concord for, she's right there. And they're just a good match and we love her and I'm just so grateful to have her there with my dad. <laughs> Thank you, Belinda. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you guys for coming and, you know, sharing your story. And we're really, really appreciative for that. So thank you. Um, so one thing I will say is that, yeah, so, you know, we were really lucky. John and Ann, I think, applied within two weeks of each other. And Claire and I just looked at their application and we were like, they're compatible. And it actually worked out, you know, turned out Anne's an amazing singer and Don is an amazing musician. And so they really just hit it off um, from the get go. So now what we'll do is I'll answer a couple more questions. And so I'm going to unmute people and just if individuals want to ask, and then we'll just wrap up and talk about, you know, our other programming. So give me a second while I figure that out. Oh, sorry. Gabrielle, people usually just unmute themselves. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, so if anybody wants to unmute themselves, they can, and you know, I, ask questions. I think you might have a couple more in the chat. Yeah, okay. So, and then Clara, please jump in too. Um, so we have uh, Mary. Um, do you work with other entities who may, who may have to be involved in approving the renter, like a mobile home office? Um, we in, I know we do not. So what will happen is, is that during the application process with a home provider, we have them fill out basically a declaration stating if they can or cannot rent the home. It, say if they're a renter, say if they're like the master the master tenant or the renter, um, they'll have to write a declaration saying, you know, yes, I'm approved as part of my lease. Um, we won't look at their lease just because of, for privacy reasons. However, we have them sign telling us if they can or cannot rent it. Um, um, but, but I, I guess, so, 
Sorry, oh, just no, and I might be wrong, so Clara, jump in. No, no, no. Uh, you are correct, but I just wanted to add that um, we've also, we have worked with entities before, for example, Rossmore. We have set yes. up matches within Rossmore, and I know in that case, um, we had to work with um, Rossmore staff to make sure that, you know, our LTA also um, meshed well with their guidelines for people living in Rossmore. So we yeah. have done it, yeah, we have done before, but more often than not, it's what Gabrielle is talking about. Yeah, and what we've noticed is that in, so in San Francisco, we've had a lot more renters who are looking for somebody else to rent within their home. So, you know, it'll be like a renter, a home provider who's a renter who's coming to us. In Contra Costa County, we've had more home providers, but we'd love to get more renters to join us also, um, who are wanting, you know, to find, an, to find a home seeker that way. Um, and and you got a question if you are retired or do you work outside the home uh, i will unmute you um the question well the answer to the question is um uh, no i'm not retired i do in-home supported services on the regular when i'm not you know in the COVID shut down but yeah i'm not retired i do still work okay thanks ann yeah so if any does anybody else have any other questions um if you do you know you can put them in the chat or uh, i was just typing one um i'm curious if this is like an original program or is there in the history of our country has a program where people have shared housing during wars during the early church it seems like such a christian thing to do and i was just wondering if there's any history to your program or oh yeah did you guys just invent it no we did not invent it home sharing has been around forever um i don't know the exact point at when it started but i imagine that you know just thinking about how families or just family friends you know, invite one another in to come stay with them. This concept's been around for so long. There is a, I know, a, I believe there's a very popular and famous home sharing model that came out of Vermont um, that really started there and then started taking off everywhere else. Uh, home sharing is all across the U.S. now. We based our model, though, off of hip housing in Santa Clara. Um, and we kind of modeled after them. Uh, our, what we're trying to do is just make it, we're, we really just want to promote the idea of home sharing, the idea of people coming together, of the sharing, the idea of like the sharing economy, um, and just really guiding people to help them to create these agreements to have two parties really mutually benefit from one another. Um, but yeah, no, I, I don't know the exact answer to your question, but I can tell you this is something that's been around for forever. Um, and yeah, and just to jump in, if you want to do some extra reading on home sharing and like the history of the home share, um, Gabby talked about a Vermont program. The founder of that program is Anna Marie Pluhar, and she wrote a book about home sharing that um, if you're interested in home sharing and how to do it right, highly recommend picking up a copy of Anna Marie Pluhar's book. Yeah, so I'm just gonna go through the final slides and then open it up again for everybody to just kind of like share. Um, so before we end, I just wanna let people know about our other programming that is free, it's at no cost. Uh, we have Market Day, we have Well Connected, Social Call, and Senior Resources. And Claire and I will just really quickly kind of go through those so we can let people ask some more questions because I know we have a couple more. So Well Connected is an award-winning award -winning telephone and online program that's community-based, um, provides community-based activities, education, friendly conversations. It used to be called the Senior Center Without Walls, and then we changed it to Well Connected. It's offered 365 days a year. It's a national call, so you could be on, you know, talking to somebody in a group from, you know, the Laf Lafayette area to somebody in New York. And we've had more than, we're across the 50 states, 
we've had more than 206,000 participants. However, that number has really skyrocketed since the shelter in place. I know we've been growing that program a lot. We offer the programming in English and in Spanish. And basically, this is an example of all the phone, like the programming that we offer. And again, it's free. It could either be virtual, either through Zoom, or if you want, if you know, for low vision, you could do a phone call. Uh, but we offer everything from a gratitude line, which is basically in the morning, you can call in and just everybody goes around and just says one thing they're grateful for. Uh, we, you know, have a low vision support group. We have a personal storytelling group. We have everything from a book club. Um, and this is again offered all year round. So Claire's just gonna mention social call. Yeah. Um, so if you know um you wanted to connect to someone, but maybe a group setting isn't your style, maybe you prefer a one-on-one -on -one connection, social call is our program for you. It's a friendly visitor matching program. Um, and it used to be on by phone or in person, but now I'm sure as you've guessed, it's 100% over the phone. Um, but basically we match participants with vetted trained volunteers who come to you or who call you once or twice a week and just have a conversation with you, um, see how you're doing. Um, and you can join the program as a volunteer or as a participant. Um, if you wanna, you know, brighten someone's day and call them and check in with them, um, and, you know, serve the community that way. I know Social Call is always looking for volunteers. So, yeah. yeah. That also reminds me, Well Connected is always looking for volunteers. So if you are a poet, if you are an artist, or just if there is a class that you are an expert, a subject you're an expert in, and you want to lead a class on it, Well Connected is always looking for people to lead classes. So next we have market day. So it is a low cost produce market that we um, help run through various senior centers. I know the Walnut Creek Recreation Center does this. Um, however, due to COVID-19, they're currently on hold. But if you are interested in knowing where they are across the Bay Area, I can send you that information and just keep you up to date as to when they're gonna open. Um, there's multiple ways to engage. You can go buy produce or you can volunteer to help um, you know, put up the produce stands. Uh, but the idea is, is just we want to be able to offer um, produce just really at a reduced cost for individuals. And then we have senior resources. Yes. So um, senior resources are individuals who are experts in the resources in their area. So we have one senior resource director for um, every county I think pretty much every county in the Bay Area. In Contra Costa County, our senior resource director is Annette Balter. And um, what she does is basically if you call her with a question like, hey, Annette, I really want to take meditation classes, but I don't know where to look. Annette will be the one who'll be like, oh, I got you. And we'll send you all of the information you need, like basically every meditation class in your area, how to sign up. Is it like specifically for seniors or people with low vision or what have you? Um, senior resources, they also used to offer a free monthly luncheon when people would be able to gather. But now instead of a luncheon, they have a monthly food delivery service for people who need food delivered to the home. Um, and then senior resources, senior resource directors are also in charge of our um, emergency funds. And our emergency funds are one-time payments of around $300 for people who, you know, have run into a sticky situation, whether it be, you know, maybe you blew a tire or um, your water heater broke and you just need that financial help to overcome this one hurdle in your life, the emergency fund is for you. Um, and so you just fill out an application and the senior resource director will approve it and then get you that funding. Yeah. So this is, if you want to participate, this is just some information about how to participate. I can also, you know, if you get in contact with Christoph, um, he can put you in contact with me and I can definitely connect you with the individuals, provide you the phone numbers for who to contact, either if it's for the emergency fund, for market day, uh, for well-connected or social call, we can connect you to them. So 
Yeah, I mean, that concludes our presentation. We definitely want, I'll stop sharing my screen in a minute, but this is my phone number, this is our phone number. So if you have questions, that is our email. Um, we just really are thankful for the opportunity um, to come speak to you all. And so please, if you know of somebody that's, you know, thinking about renting out their home or renting out a room or looking for a roommate, let them know about us. Again, we're a free program. Our goal is to really just help people to age in place, stay in their communities, and bring two individuals together that can really benefit from a home sharing environment. So I'll stop sharing my screen, and I know I have one more question here. Okay, so our last question says, what have you found to be concerns or reasons for reluctance that people have to even consider this as an option? Um, I think for, for home providers, the reluctance that we've seen has been just the concern with home sharing in general, with renting. Um, you know, sometimes people get nervous about having somebody new in your home and that is completely understandable. Like I, I just, I used to home share a lot. I mean, when I was in college and I've had a variety of roommates. So you always get that nervousness beforehand. Um, but that's why we're here to really make sure that, cause all we're doing is we're matchmaking. So we're really just trying to introduce you to individuals you're compatible with. So the power is in your hands. You can, two individuals have to say yes to each other. You can always say no. People say no to each other all the time and that's perfectly fine. Um, but I think that's the reluctance, just that initial nervousness about, you know, having somebody new in their home. Um, and then also, also um, I think with, home with home seekers we have had some reluctance in terms of individuals just wanting to you know the living together agreement sometimes turns people off because it's so lengthy and it's very in-depth so you're really sharing a lot of information with one another um in terms of like your preferences and uh so i i i have seen some reluctance there um with COVID 19 we've just had re we've just had kind of a hard time with people opening up their homes um however like i said we provide people with the information and we make it up to you make it up to the individual like do you you know here's the information from the cdc here is what people are saying about home sharing how to quarantine separately if somebody's showing symptoms um we help them create a plan um, but we also respect individuals of saying, you know what, I'm not ready for that. And we're like, that's fine. I'll call you monthly just to see if you ever are ready. And it's, you know, it's the power's in your hands. We're just here to kind of, we're just here to support you. Um, so I don't know if anybody else has any other questions. Um, um, uh, yes. Uh, first yeah. of all, uh, Gabriella and Clara, thank you so much. Uh, it's fascinating, really. I had a conversation this week uh, about uh, Americans, maybe it's not all Americans, but the need for privacy is so, I think that would be one of the things that are, uh, you know, reluctant. In our homes uh, with the young family, you've got to get your kids uh, their own bedroom. You can't have two kids sharing a bedroom. Oh my gosh, that's like tantamount to, you know, primitive, you know, or even a kid growing up, I got to have my own room. So that whole sense of common space, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's something that's a challenge, I think, especially in a community, you know, like ours, where, you know, we, as I say, we prize our privacy. And there's a lot of Christian virtue in the notion of sharing, you know, that, uh, you know, to open one's home, the gift of hospitality. And you're showing us the benefits financially, emotionally, psychologically, even physically, that a, a program like this can, can have. If we can overcome that, that notion of, you know, territorialism, or impingement upon my time or my uh, privacy. So I'm grateful for 
for that, that you present that, you know, before us, uh, you know, for something to consider. And we may know people who we could recommend something like this to. Some people that might be in the community hurting because of their uh, isolation or, you know, being alone, who really could benefit from something. So thank you for, you know, opening up this, uh, you know, to us. And th thanks to Christoph for making making it happen and, and uh, being in touch. Yeah, thank you. And, I, you know, I will say some people come to us wanting to really have a companionship. And some people just want to be like, hey, you do your thing, I'll do mine. We'll cross paths in the kitchen when we make a meal and that's really it. And so there's so many types of relationships that people build in this program. Mm -hmm. It really just depends on you and your preferences. So yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for letting us come. I wondered, uh, is it always just one person and one person or has it been a move in uh, to a, a couple, a married couple say that one has a, a space that they'd want to run out? Yeah, we have had that. Um, we've also had it where somebody might have children and they, you know, somebody's opening up their home and letting them come in with their children. Maybe they have extra space or maybe it's a family that's wanting to, has an extra spare bedroom and they're wanting to rent out a room. So yeah, we, there's a very big diversity in terms of the types of matches we have um, and even intergenerational matches, you know, with maybe students coming and staying for a short time. Um, it's very, very diverse. Now I did notice in the uh, pie chart and the statistics that a large number of people participating are coming from, from homelessness. Uh, our, our community has supported uh, formerly Contra Costa Interfaith Housing, which is now Hope Solutions. I sit mm -hmm. on the board of Hope Solutions and our goal is to provide permanent housing for formerly uh, homeless to help move people from homelessness. How does, does this program help do that? So we, yeah, so what will happen is, is that we'll have a lot of individuals that are homeless at the time that are needing to save up. And it could be that they're on a waiting list for an affordable, for a senior affordable housing. That's what we've seen a lot oh, of. Um, or they're waiting to get into more permanent solutions like hope, like hope solutions. So they're looking at home sharing as more of just kind of a temporary thing in order to then, you know, be placed into their own, um, in their own apartment or, you know, once they're off of the waiting list. Uh, we have seen a lot of that. So this really could be a great stopgap measure for somebody to move them out of homelessness into an opportunity that will give them, you know, more permanent housing. Yeah. And then we've had the times where it's, you know, we've had a match that's been five years together where they just, it's more of a permanent long-term thing. I think it just depends case by case. It seems like there's a lot of variety and a whole spectrum of options. Uh, you're just the, the middle person trying to make that happen. Yeah, I call us the, I feel like we're a matching app. And I feel like most of the time, you know, we're just getting two people's profiles and then just trying to match, you know, putting them in contact with one another and saying, hey, Don, Ann, do you guys want to talk to each other? You do? Okay, let's exchange numbers. And then we'll help you walk through the process. Um, but again, you can say no, or you can say yes. Like it's about, you know, we'll introduce you to multiple people that are in our program. Um, You're like match.com, except the name has already been taken. So you can. <laughs> For housemates, yes. <laughs> well, our, our time is almost at a close. Um, you have all the, the information that uh, Claire and Gabriella gave you, as well as contact information and I guess and you could go on the website as well and uh, you know find out more details if you want so we're great very grateful uh, to you a, a word to our uh, community thanks for being here tonight um, next week uh, we're going to look at a socially responsible investment uh, you know the song from um, Cabaret money makes the world go round the world go round the world go round and investment is part of that mechanism that makes the world go round. But there are ways to make the world spin around smoothly where many, many people can benefit from it. And there are other ways that money gets invested that uh, might not be supporting something that we want to support. And that's true for in institutions. Uh, 
uh, even religious orders and our churches that uh, dioceses that have investments are looking and examining what are those investments doing do we are we really aware of what that money is going uh, you know that we're giving and trusting to somebody else in order to make profit for ourselves what is it doing and so socially responsible investment is an opportunity to look at that and it also applies to individuals so we're going to have two people with us uh, next week um, Buzz Sherwood uh, has uh, been uh, in touch with an investor uh, who does social response socially responsible investment and then an organization called Mary's Pence um, is also going to uh, be with us a couple representatives uh, who look at this this topic so that's that's for next week and then looking ahead uh, to the uh, to the future um, I've heard recently some really uh, kind of tough statistics about what COVID is doing uh, to people I, one statistic said one out of 15 people could uh, be diagnosable uh, with some kind of mental, it could be depression, it could be anxiety, and so on. Now, in this pandemic, uh, the statistic is one out of four. And that includes you and me. And so I'd like to bring in, uh, you know, uh, some people that work uh, in counseling and so on to give us tips. How, we, how can we stay healthy mentally, emotionally, psychologically during this very very stressful time period which is going to continue uh, we know for for quite some time um, in our a desire to expand our awareness of a multicultural multi-religious world uh, a friend of uh, ours from the community who used to live in Lafayette who's a, a Sikh the religion of Sikhism is going to be with us uh, in a few weeks to talk about it is, uh, there are 25 million adherents to the Sikh religion. It is the ninth largest religious, uh, religious tradition in the world. And I bet if we, I asked you to define it or say something about it, most of us, if not all of us, wouldn't be able to even say, what is that? So it gives us an opportunity, again, to expand our, our horizons a little bit. So. Thanks everybody very much. Uh, we'll see you this uh, Sunday at uh, 9.30 or 11.30. Uh, don't forget we're sharing Eucharist at 10.30 and 12.30 on Sundays in front of the church. Um, several dozen people have been taking uh, advantage of that and joining um, for that purpose as well. So have a, a peaceful evening. Thanks again to uh, Gabriella, Clara, and to their guests uh, for um, opening up uh, a new aspect uh, to uh, homes and how our homes can become places for everybody to enjoy life.